Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Samantha back here with another cute video. Uh, in one of my more recent uh, tutorials, I was wearing this particular ring on my thumb and I had a few people message me or um, put in the comments that they'd like to have a tutorial on this. Um, I just very, very, very simply tealer beads and 11 seed beads with some copper wire or any wire of your choice. So shall we have a look at how to make these? They are literally made with tealer beads, which uh, I'm sure you've got on your in your stash. Just these little cute rectangular beads with two little holes in and I gathered a few quite a few of these guys over a period of time and you know when you sit there and you think oh what on earth am I going to make with these you know when you buy something you think Ugh. and I, I just oh pleasure flight there we go hang on good grief oh, it's, yeah. pleasure flight afternoon again sorry guys <laughs> so you buy these things and you think what on earth am I going to make with these so today we're going to replicate this guy here because it's it's a really nice color but you can make them with anything really, just tealer beads and 11 OC beads. So these ones here have two beads in between, two sets of seed beads in between, and this one here just has one set of seed beads in between. So you can make as many as you like, three in between, two in between, you know, that kind of thing. So shall we go ahead and make this? All right, so let's have a look what we need. So for this tutorial, you're going to need some 0.8 millimeter. I'm using copper wire just because I like it, but you can use any wire you like, as long as it's 0.8, or indeed, if you have larger tealer beads, just make sure that the wire goes through the holes. That's, that's the only restriction. All right, so I'm going to be using these ones today. You're also going to need some 11 OC beads. So I think that this color scheme is quite pretty. So I'm going to be using these and replicate this one today, but I might make it slightly bigger for my middle finger. All right, so that's all you're going to need. I mean, how easy is that? The only tools that you'll need are some flush cutters. You will need a pair of chain nose pliers. You will need um, a ring mandrel. Uh, you can use whichever one you like. The, I have a plastic one. And a metal one, this um, stainless steel one has taken some battering over the years, so I'll be using this one today. If you're making it for yourself, I'll show you how to do that. And if you want to make it to size, if you're making it for someone else or indeed to sell them, I'll show you how to do that too. OK, so let's go for it. So I'll clear this away and we'll, we'll get going. OK, so I'll see you in a soon. So we are back and uh, let's let's go for it shall we so the first thing you need to do is to get yourself a piece of 0.8 20 gauge wire or indeed as i said before um a piece of wire that will fit through your tealer beads so if you have the larger versions obviously you can maybe go up to 0.9 um, 21 gauge not 21 19 gauge is it anyway let's take a piece we're going to be doubling this over, so you do need a decent amount. So I'm going to say for me, I probably will use 20 centimetres, something like that. I don't have my um, ruler, but that doesn't matter. All right, so I need to find the middle of it because we need to be bending it. So just eyeball. But the first thing to, to think about is we want to make the bend that we're going to make the width as near as we can to the width of the the distance of the holes in the tealer bead. OK, so can you see how we've got a hole here? So I would pop your plier down to where you're just covering both holes. If you can see that. There we go. Can you see that? I hope that is focusing okay so I know because I have a mark on my plier that that's where I want it to be so find the center 
You can adjust it slightly if you get it a little bit wrong anyway, so don't worry too much. So find the centre as near as you can. If you want to measure it, then also do that. And bend. Yeah, I was a little bit out there, but not to worry. So. So we have this. I'm quite well off there, Sam, honestly. That must be my eyesight. Never mind. Not to worry, but you get the picture. So we have a little bend in here. So the first thing we need to do is let me just snip that down. I'll make this one for my daughter instead, I think, because this will not go anywhere near my big fat sausage fingers. <laughs> so just take your two lengths of wire here and just pop one of the tealer beads on. And obviously some of them don't have holes large enough. This one should be fine. Yeah, just pop it down to the end and just have a look and see if you need to bring that in a little bit, which I do, which is fine. You know, nothing's an exact science, is it? So this is what you're looking for. All right, so just pop that one back off. What I tend to do is to put four, uh, two on either side of the seed beads which we'll do now. I'll just get a few of these out. There we are. And this is where we, we try and get the seed beads on without them flying everywhere. So you want two on one side and then two on the other. Let me know what you think about this surface. I know it's different from my usual, so I'm just trialing um, a new surface out. I did have a couple of people say that the other, my older surface is too reflective and they weren't seeing things very well. So let me know what you think. OK, so there we are. There's our two lots of seed beads on. Pop a, pop a tealer bead on now. So bear with me while I work through the camera, which is always difficult calling out the seed, the tealer beads that don't have big enough holes because, you know, not all, not all beads are made equally, are they? Okay, so there we go. So you basically just keep going. So two beads, turn it over, two beads on the other side. So as you're going along, you just want this kind of thing going on. Two beads, a tealer bead, two beads on either side. Let's find another one of these that will fit. There we are. And then just literally pull it down. So you continue to do this until so two on one side, turn it over, two on the other, like so, and find another little rectangle tealer bead here and just pull. All right, so that's all you do until you get a few on, which I will not force you to watch. <laughs> so I'll come back in a couple of minutes when I've got all of these guys on and we'll meet back when you have, um, you know, a decent amount on. Your finger size obviously will determine how many you require. Um, my best advice basically is when you get to sort of about here, just pop it around your finger and just sort of gauge, you know, whether you've got enough or not. All right, so I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Have fun. All right, so we are back. I um, hope you had a lot of fun doing that. It's a little fiddly, I know, but, but worth it. Uh, let's um, put the last bits on. I've worked out that I need... Uh, 10 of the tealer beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll just put the final one on. So through and down like so. I finish mine off with the seed beads on either side. So just pop your final two seed beads on, two on either, on either length of wire here. 
there we go and the last one on right so there are a couple of ways that you can do this if you're making this for yourself just you can bend it around your finger to have a look how it fits so you just basically just bend it round into a, obviously a circular shape you'll still need a ring mandrel um, just to finish things off but just you know basically pop it around and just have a have a look we're going to be fitting these two wires through this um, hoop here so just make sure that all of your beads are um, pushed up but not too pushed up because we want a little gap here all right so we need about that much space because we're going to be fitting these two wires through that gap so make sure that when you're bending everything around and your beads are all fitted nice and closely together like they are here that you do have that little gap or else it will um, be too tight and you're in and you've got a risk of, of breaking your little beads and you don't want to do that really. All right, so here we have our little gap. So you need to cut and snip these guys off here about, I don't know, a centimetre, I would say. It doesn't matter if it's slightly longer than that because you can, you, you know, you will be trimming it at the end. So with this little gap here, pop your two wires up and through like so. And don't worry about the shape for now because we'll come on to our ring mandrel in a second and straighten things up and round things off, if you will. So take your chain nose and make sure that these guys are pulled through equally like so can you see that i'm really sorry about that break there my camera ran out of memory <laughs> honestly so i've had to clear it off and um, so hopefully hopefully it won't be too disturbing for this video so never mind um anyway where were we <laughs> so you pull these guys through um and as you can see there we just pull them through and you basically all you need to do is just very very gently twist sort of pull the these two um pieces of wire over now obviously that's too long so what we need to do is cut this wire so that it's in line with the middle of these two beads that's what i like to do anyway so i'll just come in with my cutters and obviously flush cut so i'm gonna go about here i think yeah about there Get rid of those two little bits. And as you can see here, we've got two little ends. So all you need to do now is very gently just bend those in. As nice and neat as you can. And they just sit in the centre there. I found that um, they don't catch at all. And, you know, it's just a little cute little dainty ring. It doesn't have to be perfect, does it? I mean, you know, look at these guys here. That's that's how it's finished off. And I don't find any problem with that at all when I'm wearing mine. Aren't they cute? So the next thing you need to do, really, at the very end of it all, is just take your ring mandrel, pop your little beaded ring on, just give it a bit of a squeeze with it being 0.8, um, 20 gauge I think that is it's pretty malleable but not so much that it bends or you know quite a lot so how's that so just pop that on this is for my daughter this is the one for me which I wear on various different fingers you'll have seen me wearing it on my thumb oh here comes my dog no there goes my dog he's gone back outside <laughs> So this little bump here, you won't feel it because it's it's um, nice and tucked in. But how cute is that? Yeah, so that's how you make these particular rings. If you are wanting to make them for yourself, obviously, you like I said, you could just bend it around your own finger and see um, the size that you want. Or 
If you're making them to sell, all you need to do is when you're bending it round um, and, and checking how many of these little guys you need, um, the only thing you need to do is to pop it around your ring mandrel as you're making it and just bend it around the size that you want. Okay, it's dead, dead easy. All right, so I hope you enjoy making those. Uh, I really like these. You can make them to sell. You can make them for gifts, friends and family, or just wear them all yourself and wear them all at once. <laughs> like I do. Look at all these gorgeous things. There you go. Makes some ugly hands look quite pretty. All right, so have fun making those. Let me know in the comments um, how you get on and I will see you very shortly in my next video. Have a lovely week, guys. Bye.